and they took it over a cell phone. The statement was asked to be recorded. There's two affidavits on, um, matter of fact, they're coming today. I think those documents are coming forth this afternoon, be here shortly. And we also have the translation. It goes from English to Swahili, Swahili to English, back and forth. But his grandmother, 85-year-old, paternal grandmother, which he doesn't refer to right now, he sort of lets that slide. He talked about his maternal grandmother, who unfortunately passed away, but he doesn't talk about his paternal grandmother. But yet there was a national holiday a week or two ago in Kenya after Obama wasn't elected, as far as the Electoral College hasn't voted yet, when he received more votes than anyone else on November 4th, they had a national holiday. And a week or two ago, there was a telephone call from a uh, Detroit radio station to the Kenyan ambassador here in Washington. And in that discussion, it basically said, his, we know where his home is there. It's like a national spot in, in, in um, Kenya already. And now the ambassador is trying to double talk his way back out of that. Um, if Obama really had a Hawaiian birth certificate, we would have seen it by now. What's been misquoted a lot of times is the Hawaiian authorities, two individuals stated they saw his birth certificate and it's for real. But notice in their statement, if you go back a couple weeks ago, it does not mention that it's a Hawaiian birth certificate. It also doesn't mention Kenya, but it does not mention it's a Hawaiian birth certificate. Our research has determined, based on the grandmother and other, he was born in Kenya. Then they came back to the United States and registered the birth, which is allowed in Hawaii. By being in, born out of the country, any of you, any citizens of the United States, if you travel, if both parents are from the United States and you're out of the country on vacation, once you go through immigration and come back, your child is considered natural born. When only one parent is a United States citizen, you have to look at the law in effect at that time. The law in effect at that time said the U.S. citizen must have lived here 10 years, and five of those years had to be after the age of 14. His mother was only 18 when she delivered. Now, some people come up and say, You're, that's a technicality, 18 to 19. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't write the law. You didn't write the law. The law was written many years ago, and the, the cases have interpreted it goes by the date of the birth of the child. Based on that, if I'm correct, he's born in Kenya, he is only a naturalized citizen ineligible to be president of the United States. Next, even if he's born in Hawaii, he loses, even if he's born in Hawaii, he loses his citizenship when he goes to Indonesia. Now, let me just give you that again perspective so you understand. If any of us here go out of country and adopt a child, we bring the child to the United States. When we go through the paperwork and stuff, that child becomes a naturalized citizen of the United States, and that child takes your name in most instances. Well, Obama's parents divorced. His mother remarried in Hawaii. In his book, Barack Obama states, my stepfather returned to Indonesia before I did. When my mother and I went there, I immediately went to school. Indonesia in the 1960s was a turmoil. The only ones who were allowed in school were natural born citizens of Indonesia. Now, he wasn't born there, but the statute go on further. You can be considered natural born if you're adopted or acknowledged by your stepfather. That's what happened. One or the other happened because he goes to school there for four years. We have a copy of his school record, which is coming over again this afternoon. It's also on our website, ObamaCrimes.com, which shows his name, Barry Sotoro. It also states nationality, Indonesia, and religion, Islam. Now, at age 10, when he returns to, mom sends him back to live with her parents at age 10. This is significant, ladies and gentlemen. One of two things occurred. He either went through immigration or didn't. Now, then how could he have gotten back? Well, how did he get to Indonesia? Perhaps on an Indonesia passport, the same passport he uses later in life at age 20. We'll discuss that in a minute. If he goes through immigration, which we don't believe, he would then have been given a certification of citizenship for the United States, through the United States State Department, through immigration, and would have stated natural, naturalized, not natural born, because he was a natural child of Indonesia. And at that time, by the way, Indonesia did not provide for dual citizenship. If, on the other hand, and we think this is really what happened, we think if he didn't go through immigration, believe it or not, Barack Obama would be an illegal alien today. Not only not able to be president, 
but not able to be a United States Senator for the last three years from Illinois. And we really believe that's the case. Also, if Barack Obama did not change his name legally, his real name today would be Barry Sotoro. And we've asked for those documentations also. If it is, then he's been used, it's perjury and fraud in the past number of years using a different name. Remember, let me go back to my opening statement. He graduated Harvard Law School. We're talking about a very educated person. He was head of the Harvard Law Review. He taught constitutional law. You know, his wife is an attorney. I personally think if and when the right court handles this matter, I think that Barack Obama and Michelle Obama and, and good old Howard Dean, the head of the Democratic National Committee, and others at the Democratic National Committee, and individuals on Obama's campaign staff should really be tried criminally, and ma many of them should go to jail. This really is the biggest hoax ever contemplated against our country in 200 years. Now, I also mentioned the other fact that at age 20, he went to Pakistan. In his book, he states, I went to Pakistan on my Indonesia passport. Again, one of two things occurred. If he claims to be a United States citizen at that time, he has then done an overt act against the United States because U.S. citizens were prohibited from going to Pakistan in 1981. And, and then if he did, was a U.S. citizen, he would have lost his status when he went to get his Indonesia passport. I think what happened is he's always had his Indonesia passport. Someone did a freedom of information and came back that he never applied for U.S. passport. I can't confirm that yet. We've now also requested that, but I haven't personally done it until I do. I'm not 100 percent sure. But that would make sense. Now, then how's he traveling? Well, he could have traveled on his Indonesia passport, and once he became a U.S. senator, he's probably traveling, uh, traveling on a diplomatic passport. But we have a college, a Harvard Law School graduate who refuses to release his records from Occidental University, from Columbia University, from Harvard. I came up with a about a month and a half ago, a lot of people are agreeing with me, why he, didn't why he won't release those records. I believe those records will indicate that he's, from Indo that he's a citizen of Indonesia, he probably applied for and received foreign aid, and that's why he won't release his records. I can't see any other reason because McCain released his records and said he graduated fifth from the bottom of his class at the Naval Academy, so it has nothing to do with grades, I don't believe. Why else? He won't release his medical records. He won't release his records from the uh, State Senate in Illinois. He will not release any records. Now, we're not asking for his Social Security number. We're not asking for his bank account number. We're not asking how much money in the bank. We're asking, first off, for his birth certificate. Now, a gentleman called me and said, remember that certification of live birth he used? A gentleman said, I carried my certification of live birth in my wallet for 40 years. I went to get a passport, and they told me that it wasn't valid. I had to get, they had to get a passport. I mean, sorry, they had to get the original birth certificate for the passport. A woman called me, she said she tried to place her son into um, Little League, and she took a certification of live birth, and he said, no, no. You need your birth certificate. We all need birth certificates sometime in our lifetime for little league, for baptism, for college, sometimes selective service, for, for, the, um, for your passport, for certain colleges, for certain applications, for jobs, certain type proceedings. So what is so difficult, Mr. Obama, to produce your birth certificate? But as I stated, I really could care less about the birth certificate. More significant, ladies and gentlemen, is the certification of citizenship from Indonesia. But that would only show he's naturalized, and I'm sure he has it. So I was dismissed in my case because of one reason, because they said that I didn't have standing. What that means is I don't have standing, Bob doesn't have standing, no one in this room has standing, and the judge went on and said, well, perhaps in the future Congress will figure out who has standing. I'm asking a question, which all of us should be permitted, to question the Constitution. Now, again, we're not trying to interpret difficult words like in that movie, what was it? I'll probably mispronounce it, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> I don't even know what it means. But we're asking, the qualifications are three. First, you must be 35 years of age. He is. Second, you must have lived in this country for 14 straight years. He has, even though there's a question about that now, but let's give him the 14. And the other is natural born. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. So hopefully the Supreme Court will give us standing in this case. If they don't, I file, well, right now I, I told you I filed the application for the injunction. Hopefully we'll do that pending our writ of certiorari in the case. 
And if not, there's actions being filed, you'll hear from in California in a minute, and other actions all across this, uh, this nation to prevent the electoral college vote being allowed until he proves his qualifications. Now, hopefully the Supreme Court will take this because there's nothing more important, I believe, and when I was introduced, you, you heard, I'm a Democrat. And people were shocked because people thought I'm a disgruntled Republican, I'm for McCain, and that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this for one reason. There's nothing more important than our U.S. Constitution. And if we don't want to stand up for that, it's time to leave this country. Because if we can't have the Constitution enforced, and I'm talking about basic words, our founding fathers drafted this. My office is in Lafayette Hill, which is right outside of Philadelphia. And many times I say it's halfway between Philadelphia, where our nation was born, and Valley Forge, where our battle of freedom was won. People have lost their lives and died, uh, died over the years to enforce our